What's going on, bro? Oh, man. Nothing much, man. Uh, how's everything going with you? It's been a morning. It's long. <laughs> I won't say long. It was uh, sat down and just had a really some progressive uh, conversation with uh, my wife's side of the family talking about, you know, we they just uh, announced the presidential uh, mm -hmm. results yesterday. So congratulations to President-elect uh, Biden. And then our first uh, African-American and female and South Asian uh, Vice President uh, Kamala Harris, uh, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. So that was a, that was a, a big thing. And then just um, discussing about you know, kind of like um, racism back during uh, my in-laws time and just kind of like, you know, where we are today and like how things have changed. And then we start getting into conversations about, um, you, know, you know, economics and, and uh, generational wealth and, you know, business and things of that nature. So, um, and I, and, I, and I thought it was a great conversation and we didn't even have enough time to like really get into it to get into everything. Um, but I think these are definitely like important conversations to have and to begin having now because um, and, and I want and I'm going to tie this in to, um, you know, health as well. You it's important to, uh, you know, look at, you know, the your, your family history. And, and look at you know, yep. you know those different patterns, and, and and take a lessons learned, so that you begin to understand like what they did and what you should and what you should do to do better. So when we're talking about um, the family history of you know finances, living conditions, health, um, all of those things play important because you, when you go do a checkup, you go and you know go to the doctor. Don't they have on those those forms family history of diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, things of that nature? Those things are are important. So um, I, I think is I think as we're you know going through um, our many topics and stuff, it's very important to look at the family history of you know every every aspect of you know life and how can you approve upon you know, what previous generations have done. So, yeah. yeah that's, that's a good, very de definitely good topics to hit on. And, and like you said, um, just kind of the landscape of the election and kind of seeing like, not even just this election, but you know, the past, you know, over a decade or so, and just kind of seeing how the country has been progressing, but there's still a lot of things. There's still a lot of work to be done. That's for right. sure. Right. But, like you said, as as the the younger people and the generations that come under us, and and even the ones that are our own generation, you know, it's, I think it's important for us to all have these types of conversations so that we have different perspectives. Yeah. There's insight that older people have that younger people may not be privy to, mm -hmm. and vice versa. There's insight that younger people have that older people may not really understand just how things are different today. You know, so I think sometimes they get into the thing where they try to compare, you know, who had things the toughest growing up. And it's right. like, you know, there's there's toughness in different ways. There's there's, you know, things that, you know, people are starting to come to light. Like you said, conversations about finances, conversations about not just physical health, but mental health as well. Right. It's definitely something that when I was a child, I, I didn't hear a lot of conversations about therapy, mm -hmm. the way the conversations are circulating now, especially with black community, you know, black men, especially, but mm -hmm. the black community as a whole, you know, once upon a time, you know, you, you, you basically, if you were feeling something, you just kind of had to, you know, tough it up, man up, things like that, that type of rhetoric that now we, in hindsight, you kind of see how damaging those things were because, you know, I do believe in being strong, but it, there's also strength in, in understanding your vulnerability and mm -hmm. that you don't have everything together. Right. And that sometimes you do need help, you know, so. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And, and, 
you know, I have kids, I have boys. And I think I've said in, you know, previous episodes where I'm like, there are certain things I didn't see in the household. You know what I mean? So I didn't see nutrition in the household. I didn't see, you know, physical fitness in the, in the household. And both my parents were in the army. So you would think, you know, they're, you know, having that military background, there will be, you know, there'll be some highlight and, 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 and you know, nutrition and, and, and being fit in the forefront. But like I said, when I joined the Navy, that was my, that was my perception coming in thinking that that's what the military was all about. But then when you get on this, when you get on this side of it, you don't see it as, it, you don't see it as much, or you don't, you see that um, a lot of people uh, actually struggle with nutrition and, and struggle with uh, physical fitness. So, um, you know, so it's one of those things that now, now that I, I'm, uh, I'm aware of, you know, how I came up and, and what I wasn't really, what wasn't, you know, in my face and what I wasn't really privy to. I made sure to turn that around and, and make better choices and, and have better behaviors so that now that my kids and future generations after me can see the importance of, you know, taking care of your body, your mental health, your physical health and, and stuff like that. Like in my house, and people, people, people think I'd be, I'll be joking when I, I say this, but like juice and sodas and stuff in my house goes bad. Like it expires in my house because we don't really drink it. My kids don't ask for it. Like, you know, they, they always want water because that's what we put in front of them. We put water. You, I got a four-year-old who asks for salad. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. like who does that? You know what I mean? Granted, yeah, they we have snacks and, you know, little sweets and desserts and treats and stuff that they can have in the house. Or whatnot, but like I said, it's important for them to see, you know, the right foods to eat and and what they, you know, how to take care of themselves and stuff. Like my kids, they love to exercise. They love to go outside and play. Granted, they love to be on their they iPad too, but right. they love to they love to like move. They 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 try to impress me by showing me that they're working out. You know what I mean? So, no, that's dope, man. That's dope, and you know. And it's about that balance. Like, you know, kids are going to learn a ton of things, you know, when you're not around, mm -hmm. being through school, being through everything else. So it's it's very, very definitely critical that, you know, when they're in your presence, for sure, you're instilling as many things as you can in them that are positive that they can going to be able to take with them yep. when they are out of your presence, whether they're being at school, even when they get older, just things that they, things that resonate you, resonate, resonate, resonate with you, excuse me as a child, you know, will carry over into your adulthood and just like bad traits carry over, um, good traits can carry over as well. Right. It was all about the traits, the things that you're instilling in them for sure. So. Absolutely. And we talk about, and as we going in and talking about traits, whatever, we're going to, we will, we'll, you know, segue into our, our topic for um, this week. Well, we had a, uh, we put out there on our Instagram and, and on social media about, you know, different topics that, uh, you know, we wanted to know what people wanted to hear from us and what our take on it was. So, you know, this week we was going to um, touch on, it's, it's right where uh, nearing Thanksgiving. First of all, for you guys that's already putting up your Christmas trees and you ain't getting put no respect on uh, on Thanksgiving, shame on you. <laughs> I, I got I to gotta push back a little bit, Doc. I gotta what? Back a bit. Hey. Come it's been a rough year, man. It's been a it's been a tough year, man. We're, hey, we're not we're not gonna just speed past Thanksgiving like that. I, look, I, I I get it, I understand it, but after <laughs> everything that everything that that's that's been going on, bro. If 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 look, holly jolly Christmas, holly jolly something, bro. Look, uh, look, we're look, not we're not we'll, gonna. Look, we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll get around to you know we'll, we'll get it we'll get we'll get the turkey up in there, bro. You know look, we got the whole week. We'll get it up in there. Yeah, you can't you can't wait till Thanksgiving to put the tree up. We'll get the, we'll get the it's tree up. up. It's all, you know what I'm saying? It's all but, but here's, the, here's the thing. You're going to put the tree up. You put the tree up now. It ain't Thanksgiving. And then you're going to leave the tree up until probably April anyways. Yeah, but that's my business. Yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey, when Thanksgiving come around, I could be thankful for the tree already being up. Oh, I'm my thankful. goodness. I'm thankful for the tree that's already up. Oh, my goodness. Y'all better put some respect. Y'all better put some respect on Thanksgiving, man. That's probably my... Hey. Favorite holiday. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as that, uh, as soon as all the food done, I put all the respect on it as, as necessary. Oh my goodness, man! <laughs> hey, you know, shoot, but 
yeah, we're, we're gonna get into that as well. Um, Thanksgiving and the the foods, and and I think you were actually gonna mention the question um, that the, the I, I I forget her name. Uh, apologies for the uh, Instagram follower uh, who left the question. I, I apologize for uh, not remembering your name on top of my head, but she basically uh, she wanted to talk about uh, eating slash overeating during the holidays. So I think, which I think it, for this time period, like you said, it's, it's Thanksgiving's around the corner. And I think it's, it, it'll be good for us to touch on that and just kind of, you know, hit that from a few different angles. Yeah, I agree. We was, so, so as I was saying with the, you know, the different traits, what you see in the household. So, you know, we, you and I, we're both from Florida and uh, we, you know, being in the South, you know, Thanksgiving, you know, really holidays, any, you know, any, any time <laughs> there's any type of celebration or any reason for uh, cooking to be done. Hey, they, they're my grandparents, aunts, moms mm-hmm. doing all they can. Everybody's in the kitchen. Everybody's, you know, contributing to something, you know, and there's all, there's always an abundance of food. So with an abundance of food and desserts, that there's that that ten that you know, you gotta have three, four, five plates back to back, right? And that's just a pattern. That's just that's just how we grew up. You know what I mean? You you get that that paper plate, you put enough on there till it breaks, <laughs> till it starts to bend. You can't put you gotta, no more you gotta, in there. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta double that thing up, G. Yeah, oh yeah, double it up. <laughs> sit down, sit down, eat that, go back and get you some more. You know what I mean? And then you eat. <laughs> to you in a food coma. Yeah. Take a nap, wake up, get some up, get some dessert. You know what I mean? But that's that's not always uh though that's how we came up. Um we recognize that that is actually not idea, especially when you are um you know trying to hit certain uh goals and things of nature that you have set for yourself. But we're not saying that you can't enjoy yourself, you know, it's we don't want the misconceptions of when you're on a diet or when you're, you know, working your way towards goals that you cannot enjoy certain foods or you can't uh, just enjoy, you know, life period. You know what I mean? It's, it's right. just a matter of just being mindful of, you know, I'll let you, I'll let you uh, have your input. Well, you I mean, you're, you're pretty much on the right track. And when we spoke yesterday about today's topic, one of the things that actually uh, it hit me because I, I actually had started doing it uh, not too long ago, but I think in, in the question that she was asking, um, and I want to try to think of like some practical things to kind of help people navigate through that. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that I thought about was, you know, working out before you eat. The food yeah. is typically, if you, especially black folks, <laughs> the food ain't going to be done until about 7 p.m. If you love, no, I'm just kidding. But like, <laughs> normally, like, you're, you, there's a period of time where you're kind of waiting for the food to be done, right? right? Right, So, you know, those that time in the morning or early afternoon, it, it, now, granted, if you're helping to make the food, that's, that's a completely different animal because mm-hmm. you can't go nowhere. Grandma said you can't, you can't, you're going to do what? <laughs> no, <Nah. laughs> that may not, that may not fly, but- right. You know, if you're able to pull away from the cooking piece of it, you know, get get some exercise in. Then, you know, if the if the gym is still open, typically the gyms are kind of open for a short period of time. Mm-hmm. They may be open from like eight to twelve or, or eight to nine to one. You know, you can go to the gym or you can go, you know, go jog, go do exercise, burn those calories before you come time to eat, and that's one method that I think can be helpful Mm -hmm. um but yeah so uh what in your brain what are some of the other things you think that people can kind of look at as far as so i do like the i do like the idea of um getting a workout in um before you eat um i i'm a one of those guys that like to uh do a high intensity workout right before I uh, consume 
some calories because mm-hmm. you know typically after I eat dinner I'm gonna want something sweet after the fat you know what I mean so I guess it's a way to you know stay guilt free but then we're talking about um, typically I, I you know I don't know about it um, from your experience but I know from mine you know dinner is usually or Thanksgiving or you know dinner is usually ready or something is usually ready for us to start uh, nibbling on 11 12 one o'clock right so who's to say you have to eat everything in one sitting you know what I mean um, I'm all about uh, portion control right so you can you can grab two three items here at say 11 12 o'clock consume a little bit of food here two three o'clock consume a little bit of food over here you know what I mean allow allow um, your food time to you know digest you know don't don't feel like you have to eat everything all in one sitting to where you're overstuffing yourself or mm-hmm. you're gonna spend some time in the bathroom or you're gonna pass <laughs> you're gonna be passed out on the couch while the game is on and then and then you ain't gonna do anything but wake up and go put more food um into your system and you haven't even allowed time for the uh what you put in your body already to to digest uh, so i say just you know consume over time portion control over time still enjoy the foods that you want to eat i mean you can enjoy everything but just section it off um at different periods of time so that you give that food um time to uh to, to process through your through your system and not um overloading yourself you're gonna feel heavy when you start getting that feeling of being heavy or sleepy or whatever. Just know, yeah, <laughs> that that <laughs> those calories going those calories are sticking there. Yeah, that's 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 actually really really good points that you make that you brought up. You know, pacing out the meals. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying, and not condensing everything onto one plate. Look, the food, if, you know, the most part, the turkey did. It ain't going nowhere. You ain't got to run catch it. Turkey, it ain't, <laughs> the food, the food, it ain't going nowhere. It right. ain't going nowhere. You know, and one of the things that I know from personal experience with sometimes with family members, especially, you know, you have aunts you haven't seen in forever. Grandma, you ain't seen in a minute. And, you know, of course, they look at you. For some reason, they always think you're skinny. Mm-hmm. Boy, you been, boy, you been eating. You been eating? <laughs> <laughs> they always think you, they always think you ain't been eating enough. <laughs> so you know, you can just once you've had a plate, just let grandma know, let auntie know. I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get between, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna let this simmer down first, and right. you know, because th- I think that's the other thing with your family. You know, you're in the presence of people that you care about. You're in the presence of people that you haven't maybe haven't seen in a while. Mm-hmm. It's a very comforting and endearing environment. And you don't want to feel like the the quote unquote difficult one mm-hmm. by trying to watch your, you know, manage your food and manage your eating. So from that aspect, it's just very much letting them know that hey, I'm you know, I got some stuff. I mean, I'm gonna come back and get some more. I'm just going to let this kind of simmer down first. So it's, it's just a way to have that balance and just say, you know, maybe flip it, the conversation away from, you know, why you're not eating. So, you know, Hey grandma, how you doing? Like, you've been doing okay. You've been, you know what I mean? And let them mm-hmm. talk for like an hour. And then by the time they finish yep. <laughs> talking your head off, you know, yeah. all right, I'm, I'm going to go back and get that plate. Now. <laughs> I'm gonna go back yeah, right. Plate. So, you know, it's just during that time where you're not eating, like, you know, talk to your family, like, you know, co- you know, Converse, if y'all, if y'all, you know, watching the games, you know, watch the games, talk, you know, chop it up with Unk. Mm-hmm. If y'all play, if y'all play cards or play, you know, any type of, you know, board games or whatever, you know, just use that time. You know, there's more to, to the holidays than just the food. Right. So, you know, that's a time that you want to enjoy your family and just, you know, just enjoy, enjoy hanging around with, your, hanging around with people you haven't seen in a while, you know, especially this year, you know, for sure. Like, just kind of, enjoy that piece of it as well and you know just still keep in mind have a have a have a game plan before you even show up right uh, or before everyone if you're if you're going to be hosting before people come to you 
have some sort of game plan or agenda where it's almost like if you go out and you go out with some buddies, like I'm not a big drinker. Right. So mm -hmm. I'll, but I'll, you know, if I'm, if I'm hanging out with some friends, you know, I'll, I'll make, I'll partake of, of some drinks, but I, I give myself a cap, mm -hmm. I give myself a, you know, a cutoff limit. All right, I'm good. It's, you know, it's the same approach. I think you, 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 that you want to take with your family, you know, have a plate and have a, you know, you, you know what your folks cook, mm -hmm. have an idea of what you want to make sure you get. And then, have a cap. All right, grandma, good. Or, you know, I'll take some home with me. Or, you know, and then, you know, just do it like that. But just, it's, it's just how you manage it. It's how you manage it. You know, not too much, too fast. Let it spread out over time. Right. I agree. So what do you say to someone who's, um, let's say a family of four, five, maybe six, you know, we in COVID times, they're, they're, um, they're not traveling anywhere. They're not, hosting anyone, what do you say uh, the best way for them to prepare their holiday meals? That way they are able to enjoy the uh, foods that they enjoy and then still stay on track with their current goals. So you're saying like a family, they, they're not going anywhere. They're just kind of going to- Yeah, they just, home. they stand at home. It's a, it's a family of somewhere between four and six people um, they, they still going to do the holiday cooking. So how can they plan, um, their meal for the holidays and then still stay on track with, with whatever goals that they have set for themselves? Well, I think from, from in my opinion, I think the first thing you want to try to do is make sure that you're not overcooking or not overcooking about, well, I guess it's cooking too much, mm -hmm. like try to have an idea of how much you're going to buy, if you're going to make greens, if you're going to make cornbread, if you're going to make mac and cheese, if you're going to you know, have a turkey, how big a turkey do you want? Maybe mm -hmm. get a little bit, maybe get a smaller turkey. Maybe mm -hmm. get, you know what I'm saying? So that's part of portion control too, is how much you buy before you even cook it. So that's, that's part of it. And yes, you do have a larger family. So you can, like I said, as long as you're considering everyone, uh, you, you kind of treat it the same way that you do on a, on a regular basis. As, if, as a family person, you're, you're, you're constantly trying to ration out, you know, at least from a financial aspect of, you know, how much you're spending on food and groceries mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. things like that to, to provide for the family anyway. So it isn't that much different in my brain. It's just for that particular occasion, just don't look at it as, oh, I have to go above and beyond because it's Thanksgiving. Right. You're changing the, the meals. I mean, you're changing the food for that that particular time frame, but I think essentially the practice is still the same, you know, kind of having in mind how much you want to spend on Thanksgiving, how much you want to budget out for, you know, in, in, in particular things that, you know, the family likes and the family really, really loves and enjoys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, aside from that, I think it'll be, I think you'll still be in a good spot because, you know, like I said, it's still, something where you know you're, you're you're controlling how much is going out to the family members and you're still able to kind of control it for yourself as well right so you know if you if you don't buy too much you can't or if you don't yeah if you don't buy too much you can't eat too much so you know that's kind of a good starting point i think okay yeah i, I asked that question um because we talk about you know what we're used to so if we're used to, you know, a certain spread when it comes to, you know, holiday foods. So we, some people are used to having both ham and turkey. They're used to having greens and cabbage, macaroni and cheese, and some type of like, uh, uh, like some type of rice or casserole dish, yams, you know what I mean? So um, I, I definitely think it's important when it comes to um, deciding, you know, what your what your centerpiece dish is going to be, whether you're going to do ham or turkey, not necessarily need both. Um, deciding, you know, whether you're going to do um, greens or cabbage, or you're going to do, um, it's, it's, it's just, you know, piece selection, meal right. selection, just to just make it a, a conscious decision of, you know, what you're what you're going to um, eat and consume in a, you know, let's say two to three 
day time frame mm -hmm. um and and going from there because um i know we're, we're so used to seeing you know this this wide spread of food to give you know to have more choices during the holiday and some people you some you know we may have both may eat both when you're you know dealing with a larger group of people but when you're dealing with just a small group i say cut back on your 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 selection right. and then and then go from there right because initially because it's funny you say that it's funny normally i would have said something to the effect of you know if you have neighbors or if you have if you know someone that may be going through a tough time right now yeah but because of the COVID situation i would i would cautiously exercise that because of the fact that you know we want to try to maintain as much safety as possible in that aspect of it now mm -hmm. If you do, you know, know for a fact or, or know or pretty know, know pretty well enough that your family has, you know, been tested negative for COVID and, and, you know, you buy some, you have some food that may be left over excess and, you know, instead of you trying to stuff it in your refrigerator, you know, maybe, like I said, there may be a neighbor or a family member or a friend that you know, maybe this year, grandma or auntie or my mom, you know, one of the people who do the main, the main ones do that does cooking, maybe mm -hmm. they passed away earlier this year. So maybe this year may be a little rough for them. It may, yeah. it may be a, a tough. So that's another thing we have to think, uh, in my opinion, we have to remember about Thanksgiving as well is essentially, you know, we do have to remember that we're supposed to commemorate things that we're thankful for. Right. And in this current time frame. If you have family members that are still above ground, I think that's something to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a situation where you're able to financially provide for your family, that's definitely something to be thankful for. And sometimes, you know, in, in not, not to bring the election too much back into this, but a large part of the success of, of, in most people's minds of the election were people thinking outside of themselves and thinking for the greater good of the community and to me, that has to that has to extend beyond politics in order for that to really bear real fruit. We can't just look at uh, election time and say, "Hey, we all need to come together." There's things that we can be doing just in our own communities, as far as how we treat each other, being mindful of each other. You know, like I said, in this time frame, if you know someone who's having a tough time this year uh, from Thanksgiving because of a, a death in the family or because of a financial situation, mm -hmm. you know. If you if you have the means to maybe help them out and, and you have some extra food that you may be able to provide for them and their their families, then you know I think that's something that that you should want to that you should want to do. Hopefully, if it, if it's in your heart to do that um, as well. So in the process of that, there's no excess food on your end, and you're also maybe providing someone who may not have as much as, as you have. Right. So. I agree. That was a good word, man. Um, I I can't even talk to you on that. Sorry, man. I just I just I just that was I just, but you know I just think about stuff like that. I just think about you know, you know we we mean obviously we, we talk we talk fitness and and you know but always again fitness to me is a is a parallel of life. Yeah. And you know there's life things that are ingrained in fitness and there's fitness things that are ingrained in life and and mm -hmm. you know just. Like I said, this this time of year is, you know, especially a year of just kind of having perspective on your situation. And you may not be in the most ideal situation, but like I said, there, there are some things you can find to be grateful and appreciative for. And, you know, if you have a situation where you have an abundance of food, that that's a, that's the blessing that maybe you can Again, if it's on your heart, because I'm, I'm never going to press anybody to do something that's not on their heart, but if it's on your heart to maybe, you know, share some of that with those who may not have as much. Right. So. I agree. Well, thanks for the good word, brother. Oh, absolutely. Um, I hope the um, the Instagram uh, user who asked that question, um, I hope they were able to, um, I hope we answered that question for them. And then, uh, yeah, what I'm gonna it, do is when I um when I post the the little the, the clip, mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna, uh, I think I'm gonna just tag her. Or I'm gonna either DM her that we, you know, we, we made a topic or we made an episode regarding her topic. Okay. So that way she can see it and, and give us some feedback on it. And um, yeah, man. So I think that was, that was a, but that was a, a definitely, especially now, a, a good thing to try to bring up for individuals and just hopefully they have a, some good, you know, they got something good from this episode about how to approach, you know, that situation. Yep. For sure. I agree. So anyone out there that's uh, listening, um, you know, feel free to uh, one, follow us on uh, Instagram, Facebook uh, at two fit black guys. Um, of course the, uh, the username is right here on the screen. And then uh, we will um, answer any questions uh, for future uh, episodes and, you know, that's it. I think, I think that was a really good one. Absolutely. All right, brother. Until next week. Yes, sir. All right, man. Be good. All right. Be easy. Peace.